Hi everyone and welcome to Home Reno Collectibles where today we're going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Infinite Series Iron Fist from the Allfather Builder Figure Wave. On the side of the box we have a nice image of Iron Fist and then on the back we have Iron Fist here and then a small bio if you want to check that out. And then down here at the bottom we have everyone else in the wave and the Builder Figure. So all I have left to do now is Machine Man so everyone else is already on my channel if you want to check a look. So let's get this thing open and take a look. So first out of the box we have the left leg for the Allfather Builder Figure and if you want to check out the Builder Figure in all of its glory, in its own review, that will be coming after the Machine Man video. And here is Iron Fist out of the packaging and it is a pretty decent figure. It's not amazing, as you can see you're going to instantly recognise the mould if you're into Marvel Legends. Most people would uh, think of uh, Spider-Man when they see this mould such as the Big Time, the Future Foundation, Scarlet Spider and so on. Uh, but the amount of different hands that this guy gets really does set it apart from just being an okay action figure to being a pretty decent one. So first of all, you can see that he has this kind of very kung fu kind of looking hand. I'll just show you a close up with this one and the reason that I didn't use uh, the other hand like the other way around, if I can get some focus on this thing, there we go, is this big mould line that's on there. Uh, they kind of look like veins from afar, when you look at this one just going all the way down there through the side of the finger, that is just pretty sloppy to me. Now you can actually see a lot of texture in there, uh, you know, skin detail and whatnot, like all the folds and creases. I think that looks absolutely fantastic, and there are actually some veins sculpted in there, I think. But uh, when you get to like big lines like that, it just it just does not look great. You know, the fingers look kind of webbed. Um, let's show you another one. Here we have the open gripping hand, which I have on the other hand at the back. Um, again, you know, that's seen in between the fingers there, all that webbing kind of thing. They're not molded perfectly. Now, they're obviously, uh, you know, very mass produced figures and whatnot. And when you get other figures, uh, you know, from other manufacturers, such as like Figma and SH Figure Arts and stuff, there's a lot more money that goes into these kind of things, and that's why they just come out better, you know? So you're not paying as much as those kind of figures, so all of your interchangeable parts that try and make, uh, you know, Marvel Legends as good as those figures, obviously these things aren't going to be as good. You know, the fists came out uh, pretty well there, and then we have the uh, kind of karate chop kind of hands here. These came out really well too. Um, but you know, no fingernails painted and you know, nothing too crazy. We've got a bit of that kind of mold lines, you know, going on the inside there. Um, but for the most part, I'm just really glad that for a character that knows all these kind of uh, martial arts and whatnot, that we do actually get all of these interchangeable hands to actually use with the figure. Because uh, if we didn't, I don't know, like I said, I think it would have just been an okay figure without all the interchangeable hands, like maybe just getting a fist and an open hand or something like that. I'm very, very happy that they did change from the thwipping hand because when this figure was originally revealed and we didn't get it, uh, it was actually shown to still have the Spider-Man thwipping hand, so I'm very, very happy that they did not go with that. I mean, that might have been the sole reason that they put it off. They thought, okay, I think people are going to want a little bit extra with this guy to uh, set him aside from other figures. And I'm really glad that they did, because otherwise I would have just recommended older versions from Toy Biz of Iron Fist. But with those things, I have to say this is a very, very nice figure. So we have the sash on the side right here, which I kind of feel like I wish it was just a tiny little bit bigger. I don't want it like, you know, hanging down right down here on the hips, like at the top of the legs kind of thing on the thighs. But just a little bit further down would have been nice, maybe to hide that kind of uh, the waist joint right there. And then when you did want to utilise it, you know, you could still push it up like it is. Uh, and then it would be out of the way. So I would have liked that to have just covered that line up a little bit, you know, because you can't really push it down all the way around. Um, so that would have been nice. That's my only gripe with that, really. My only other gripe is just the um, the paintwork in some areas and uh, what they've used for the moulding of the gold. So as you can see, if you take a look, we've got a very, very nicely painted gold on the symbol here. And then the moulding for the arms and for the legs and for his head, it's that kind of a swirly plastic, which I don't mind if it's used on something that's maybe metallic or whatever. It gives it a really, really nice kind of reflective looking finish. But when it's done here, where it's meant to just be like, you know, just a fabric boot or leather or whatever it is, and then like a kind of cloth or whatever his bandana would be, 
it just doesn't really look right to me. I think it would have been nice to have just been painted the same gold as this. Um, the arms, it's covered up uh, mostly by these black lines, which I'm fine with. Uh, you know, they're not supposed to be super straight. I'm fine with them being sloppy because they're meant to be wrist straps. But when you have other companies, for example, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures, those Nicktoons ones, they have really, really, really nicely molded uh, wraps and stuff on their arms and legs and their knee pads and everything. And then we get these figures that cost like two or three times as much and we just get kind of crappy black lines. I really would have liked molded wrist wraps there. They could have done it, but they didn't. Um, it's not a deal breaker. It's nothing too crazy, but it just would have set this figure apart because obviously if you have collected Marvel Legends for a long time, you probably have a lot of this mold and you'd rather have something, you know, different with this guy rather than just, you know, a different head and some interchangeable hands. I'm, I'm betting a lot of people would have really, really liked molded on wrist straps. But something I really do like about this figure is the blue shading. Now, yes, I do kind of feel like it's on all of the highlighted bits when really it should be like on the underneath of the arms like we have here instead of like just being on the uh, outside of the arms there you know I, I do wish that it, it was in some better placement in some parts but they have it a little bit on the inside of the legs but not very much but then obviously we have it heavily on the uh, outside of the arms and on the chest where really that's where the light should be but for the most part I really do like it's there it stops it from just being a really blank pale figure and then the head sculpt, I really, really do like this head sculpt. Got a little bit of messy paint here just going up over the nose, uh, but that can easily just be scratched off, no problem at all. The uh, black in the eyes right there, as you can see, it doesn't go all the way in, but it's a lot better than others that I have seen, and those silver eyes really, really do look fantastic. I like the uh, ends of the bandana down here, nice and flexible, they're not going to break and they're not going to hinder articulation at all. Well, maybe a bit looking up, but not really too much, you can get him looking up a decent amount. Uh, but I do wish that you could turn it so you could make it look like uh, they were flowing in the wind. I feel like it looks uh, to be a separate piece that they have attached to the head anyway, so it would have been nice to have articulation there, but never mind, I'm sure action figure customizers are going to just take that out and maybe just drill a little hole a bit better in you, maybe clear all the glue out and then that might be uh, a decent bit of uh, extra articulation there you could say. From the side the long neck suits a Spider-Man figure. I don't really think it suits this guy but when you look at it from the front I don't really think it looks too bad at all especially when you do pose him so for the most part I think that this figure looks really really nice. So as for articulation the head moves up a little bit down a lot we have left and right. Shoulders go all the way up and down in a full 360 degree rotation. Really nice butterfly joint for those awesome martial arts poses. Uh, swivel at the biceps, we have double jointed elbows, wrists swivel and go in and out and are obviously interchangeable. Really nice ab crunch, really really do like the fact that they did use this mould for this guy, but like I said I just really do wish we had some differences. Uh, waist rotation right there, wide joints for the legs, not too bad but I'm not massively keen on them so they go all the way out and then you swivel them and go forward. And that's, uh, you know, it's good articulation, but I just, it just feels kind of annoying to have to keep doing that if you want to change poses, especially if it's going to be a kid playing with it. I know that if I was young, I would rather be able to just get a figure and just do this than have to, uh, you know, spend a bit more time to uh, play with my figures and pose them around. But anyway, we have a thigh swivel, we have double jointed knees. Uh, again, the uh, the paintwork, just like uh, on the head there, it looks like it could just be a little bit better. You know, not massively straight lines around the boots there, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, then we have up and down at the feet, and really good ankle pivot, and we also get peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Iron Fist stands roughly six and three quarter inches tall, so he's a tiny little bit taller than the majority of six and a half inch Marvel Legends, such as Hawkeye from the same wave. So overall, I really do like this figure, and I kind of hope that we do get a green and yellow version, but I would like a different chest piece, you know, just so it's a bit more accurate to that version of the costume, with it being open and whatnot. But uh, for this version, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, obviously, little sloppy bits with, uh, with paint and the way that the interchangeable hands are done, but I do have to say, if it weren't for all of these extra accessories, then I would have to just say that this figure would just be, eh, kind of alright, you know, average. 
a decent figure, but not a good figure. But with those accessories, it really does help sell this guy. So I'd have to say I recommend it if you're an Iron Fist fan. If you're not, it's an easy figure to pass on unless you're trying to uh, build up the wave. So thanks for watching, guys. For more pictures of anything from my collection, go ahead and check out my Instagram and Twitter. It's homerino123, and links will be in the description below. Remember to stay tuned for the Builder Figure review because I just have Machine Man to do now and then I'll be straight on to the All Father and King Thor video. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and to see more, make sure you subscribe. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.